Cheers guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. So today we're gonna to take a look at man packs and antenna systems for those man packs. I have been running man packs now for about three years. And in that time, I've learned a few things and I just wanna share with you my general guidance for using those. So really the point here is really three simple things. Number one, how do we keep you safe? Number two, how do we keep the radio safe? And number three, how do we make sure the radio still performs? For the purpose of our conversation today, we're gonna to focus on VHF, UHF, or both mobile rigs that are capable up to about 50 watts and that are run in a similar configuration where we're using the protective hardware from ArmorLock, the TPA pack frames. We're potentially running in a bag and we have a properly sized battery. Uh, these days, most of my radios can use the 10 amp hour Dakota lithium iron phosphate battery. So this is what we're starting with. Uh, this guy over here is a uh, six watt radio, which is not really too applicable for today's conversation. So we're going to stick with the mobile VHF UHF rigs. So I need to address the 300 pound girl in the room and that's running your man pack with a whip antenna. In general, it is always a bad idea to do that. So this is the signal stick by signal stuff. It's capable of 100 watts. It's a fine antenna for HTs, but not for the man pack application based on my experience. So the reason for it is it's not good for your personal safety or for the radio safety uh, unless we do a couple things. So first and foremost, RF exposure. There are calculators online that'll tell you the safe operating distance based on the antenna gain that your antenna is rated for, how much power you're operating, what mode, and the proximity to you and the radiating element. So number one, let's establish at least some basic uh, operating principles if you're going to try to run a whip antenna. So number one, I see guys mounting this on their back so that radiating element is very close to that noggin. In general, I would observe the operating principles from an HT and probably not run it at more than five watts. 10 on the top end if you are short with your communication would be uh, my personal recommendation. If you're going to drop it off your back and put it on the floor, still run your whip antenna, still not a good idea. I would say no more than 20 watts, and that's mostly to protect you from that RF exposure, you're probably safer there, but also to protect the radio. The big issue you're gonna have with antennas like this is that you're missing the other half of the antenna. You're likely gonna have high SWR, and you're very likely, if you're pumping higher power, the more power you have, pumped into uh, this system, you're likely to damage the finals or other components on your radio. So not good for you, not good for the radio. Now I know it looks real cool to have like this TCA uh, antenna on here, it looks high speed, but again, bottom line guys is I don't recommend this setup. So let's take a second and talk a little bit about why we're missing half the antenna system. So if we take a look at our HT, you'll notice that we are also still missing half of the antenna. We just have the radiating element. The difference between an HT and a man pack is that the act of you holding this transceiver in your hand, your body now becomes that ground plane or the other half of the antenna. You simply don't have that when you're dealing with the man pack unless you do a few other things. I've had good luck just touching the frame itself to act as the other half, but uh, you know your mileage is going to vary there. So the reason why these whip antennas are so bad for the radio itself is that it's not a complete antenna system. So there's a few ways around that, uh, depending on how you want to experiment. Uh, there's a lot of guys out there who absolutely insist the best way to get performance out of your HT is to, in addition to your body acting as the ground, is to create something called a tiger tail. And I'm just using an eyelet here and I'm putting that over the, uh, the shield side of the antenna and then we drop this guy on. So almost like a dipole, we have two halves of the antenna and this is how we get better performance. Now I have experimented doing the same thing on the man pack and it does help quite a bit uh, having like a 19 and a quarter inch uh, system. So if you're using a BNC connector, you can absolutely take this off and run it that way. And you can use your SWR meter to see if it actually helps in your case. Another thing that I've been experimenting with, and I've got an example over here with the 818, is actually doing a better ground. And I've come up with a few ideas. So inside the pack here, I have a ground lug 
uh, that I've attached to an eyelet and a little bit of electrical cable with a connector here. And I have two types of connectors. Uh, the first one here basically mates with uh, this bullet here. You can use Anderson power poles or whatever. And now I can also connect this thing to a ground stake uh, to establish a better ground, or I can connect it to like the water pipe in my house. So really great way to improve the SWR and performance of that antenna if you're gonna run it as uh, a whip. In fact, this is a great recommendation regardless if you're running the whip or not. Uh, the other thing I found this really helpful on HF is just doing like a 19 foot counterpoise. Again, that is grounded to the chassis of the rig. So the point that I wanna make is that Whip antennas, while they may look cool and are convenient, I think they're the wrong choice in a lot of cases for men pack application, unless you're gonna be running it at the lower power. Uh, again, putting like a whip antenna with the man pack on the ground is not gonna perform well, period, because you're just too low to the ground. You might as well just use your HT. But um, the antennas that I do like to pair with the man packs are based around my three types of operations, and that's man portable, transitioning to the vehicle, and transitioning to the home. And my very favorite to use at whatever power level this thing can put out, uh, basically 50 watts and below, is something like a roll of J pole. This is the uh, Ed Fong roll of J pole. And then I've also had good luck with the N9 TAX Slim Jim, and I have used those in public service events all day long where I need a little bit more power than my HT. So number one pick. Number two pick, uh, this is not a full antenna uh, as shown here, but this is a part of what will be a jungle antenna build. I did this video up here not too long ago, maybe last year, where I showed you how to improvise a couple different variations of a jungle antenna. And again, this is something you can throw up in the tree and you can run full power and be safe at the same time and performs very well. The other antenna that I've used in the field is a directional antenna like a Yagi and we'll mount that on something like my camera tripod and I have no problem running higher power. In fact, I can get by with lower power because it is directional. So I typically will run that at about 25 watts, but there's no reason why I can't do 50 so long as the Yagi that I'm using is capable of that much power. For the vehicle, it's actually simple. It's whatever antenna I have either mag mounted or hood mounted or mounted on uh, the vehicle at that time and it works beautifully and I'll run 50 watts. Now the only thing you guys have to keep in mind is that I personally run my man packs in bags so you also need to be careful of heat buildup. Uh, I've never really had an issue because I don't rag chew. I just like to have targeted conversations and uh, we'll turn off the radio after use or if it's not too hot you know I'll li listen on receive more than anything else. So this works really well with whatever antenna system you currently have or may have in your vehicle. And then third up, I've got the shack right behind me. I have a feed line coming into the shack and I have a couple of VHF, UHF antennas on the roof. That also works perfectly fine at full power. Again, same caution on being cognizant of how much heat buildup you're gonna have in the bag. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick video. I just wanted to go ahead and share with you how to safely operate using a man pack and just reset some expectations because I'm seeing a lot of new people come in who really like the look and the aesthetics from a tactical perspective and especially love those tactical antennas. And again, bottom line here is we're, we need to be careful about our personal safety. We don't want to damage our high-end gear. So we need to be cognizant of the things we do that could damage it. And three, the reason why we're doing this is we want good performance out of our gear. So with that said, guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared.